Hello and welcome to a new video about PLCs. This time we are going to talk about how a PLC basically is working. Okay. We already said a PLC consists of, of the PLC itself. I must look if I have somewhere a picture. Here. This is what we said is a PLC, how a PLC looks like. Okay. Now we want to detail those things. So, the core element of the PLC, the PLC itself, okay, is the central processing unit, CPU, central processing unit, or it's usually called CPU. Yeah, even if it's a little bit more than a CPU in classical way. Yeah. Uh, inside of this CPU, there is for sure memory. Yeah. Working memory. RAM. Yeah. Memory. Inside this memory, we have the input representation, input process representation. So there's a process representation in and output. I will explain what this means. And then there are words, there are bits, something like this. Yeah. Memory, simply memory for bit, word. Okay. Then there is the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit. This is ALU, arithmetic, arithmetic logic unit, unit and control unit. Arithmetic logic unit. Okay. This is reading data from there and writing data to there. Okay. These are the two things. Uh, so I will make further. Yeah. There's a program memory also. This program memory is loaded into the ALU. So the control unit is always looking for the next command. Take the next command, is taking the necessary data out of the memory. The arithmetic logic unit is doing calculations or compares or whatever, yeah, and writing the, the result back into the memory. Then the control unit is taking the next command to be executed from the program memory and the next command is executed okay so this is usually this is usually ram yeah? and this is some eprom uh, something like this which is not changeable yeah? then there is of course some impulse generator yeah? clock yeah? That everything knows when to work <laughs> and there are then timers time element timer and counter huh? this is the CPU so-called CPU huh? how to get this program in the program memory yeah there is a certain programming device. Programming device. And this programming device is able to write 
its program into the program memory. You know, I also did, to, and this is still somewhere in use, yeah, that there's really aprons, the programming device is then an external device, you plug into your computer, you flash the EEPROM, and then you plug the EEPROM into the CPU, and then it's executing this program. Huh? So it's like a USB stick, but with a lot of pins. <laughs> programming device. Today, of course, this is usually a USB connection, and this is a laptop with a certain software, poof, flashing it down, and that's it. Yeah. CPU. Yeah. Then there are inputs, yeah. input cards. Yeah. Not one, but more. Whatever. Yeah. Those input cards, they might be digital or analog. Yeah. Digital cards usually have a bunch of inputs. Yeah. Digital cards usually have a bunch of inputs, 8, 16, 32, something like that, usually in blocks of 8, and they are numbered. They are numbered according uh, the number according the byte number. Okay, they have a certain address and so on. And this is this is then uh, this digital stuff. Yeah. Of course, the digital input values must somehow fit the process. So there are inputs of 24 volts, the inputs available of 220 volts or something like this. You have to select the correct input card to fit your process voltage level. And there are analog inputs. Yeah? Analog inputs are usually, usually uh, in in standard standard values. Yeah. So there is minus 20 to plus 20 milliamps. There is 0 to 10 volts. There is minus 10 to 10 volts. There's 4 to 20 milliamps. Something like this. So standard signals are usually supported by those inputs cards. Yeah? The input card, analog input card, they carry also uh, analog digital converter. We've talked about this in digital technique. Analog digital converter. Yeah. Usually we have around 12 bit. Yeah. Sometimes 13, 14 bit. Then it's getting really expensive. Yeah. This is the AD conversion. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you really have to take care if there is one analog digital converter or more. Yeah. Sometimes. The number of channels by input card is changing. Yeah? So there are input cards with 4, there are input cards with 8, 16 analog inputs. And sometimes, or a lot of times, there is only one analog digital converter on it. And it will change one channel, then it will change the next channel, then it will change the next channel. And this takes a little bit time, yeah? because the channels or the, the inputs are uh, processed in serial. Yeah? And the more inputs I use, the slower this thing gets. Yeah? So, if this is really an issue in your application, then you have to spend a little bit more money for a more expensive card. Then it's working in parallel. Okay? Good. So, here we have some inputs. Digital inputs, zeros or one, yeah, with a certain voltage level, or analog inputs with a certain value. Yeah? These inputs are now first step transferred to the memory okay a so-called input process representation a snapshot of the inputs yeah like a picture yeah? because whenever the program is executed during program execution I want to have a consistent state of the inputs yeah I'm, I do not want that an input is changing for my logic during process execution. I have a command, I read out the input, then I have the next command, I read the same input and suddenly has a different value. This should not happen. Yeah? However, the real world does not know where in my program execution I am, if I am at the beginning, and then the, the real world is not waiting yeah, for us. Yeah? So I cannot read directly from the input card, I will read from a so-called process uh, 
representation, a snapshot of the inputs. And then I will execute the command and then I will do the next snapshot. Okay. Also, I will not directly write to the outputs. I will write to an output process representation in the memory and at the end of the execution I will copy this process uh, representation to the output. Okay, so there are the output cards here. Hmm? Output. Output. Also more maybe. Yeah, not only one. Yeah. And at the end of my program execution, the process representation is copied to the outputs. Yeah. So there are also digital outputs and there are analog outputs. Also here, of course, my uh, output voltage must fit the, my process needs. Yeah. There are several digital output types. There, the most capable one is a relay. Relay output. I can really use a relay output for switching quite a load. Okay. However, a lot of times it's it's a transistor because it's simply more reliable. And then I switch with the transistor, and the transistor needs to switch an element which is capable of switching enough power for my application. Okay. So also here. Usually the internal voltage and the out, out, outer voltage, the input voltage and the output voltage, the externals and the internal voltage, they are galvanically separated. Yeah? So there is no connection in between. Yeah? So the digital output might be relay or transistor, usually transistor yeah? output. And there are also I know, cards with 8, 16, 32 outputs and so on. Yeah? And each output has a certain address. I give the number, it will write. Okay. Analog output pretty much is the same like the analog input. Now here it's a digital analog conversion with a certain with a certain resolution. Yeah. Also, then depending uh, how much money you spend and what is really necessary. Also, 12, 13 bit is very usual value. And then, of course, I have somewhere power supply. Which will supply my in and outputs, my CPU with the respective, uh, respective values for their voltage values they need. Yeah? And here I have to connect back back usually 24 volt DC yeah, plus minus that's it. Yeah? This is how shut things are looking inside. Yeah? So the inputs and the outputs they are galvanically separated from the outside world so that there is I can only destroy the inputted output card with my external voltage. Yeah. Flash, the famous flash, which is destroying everything. <laughs> it's like the escalator, which is always sticking and ripping out the cables from the ground. Yeah. It's the flash. Yeah. <laughs> so I only destroy the input and output elements. I can replace those elements. The CPU is galvanically isolated. Yeah. And is working the memory, the program. The program memory is separated usually from the memory, eh? uh, then the memory is holding then information. Timers and counters. This is also something usually I do not have to count myself. I, s I can tell from my program, eh? use timer or use counter 12 eh? and look at that input and the counter will count, and then only ask the counter, I don't have to program this. Look at the input, if it's one, aha, note. Yeah? The counter will do this for me. I only, at the only tell the counter, hey, look at that input, yeah? and then from a program, I only have to ask the counter, how far are we? Yeah? How much have you already counted? So 
discounting and program execution is somehow separated. Then I can be faster a little bit. Also timers. I do not have to get, I do not have in my program, I do not have to take care about time. I tell the timer, hey, please, timer, tell me after five seconds. Well, the timer is not really telling me, I have to ask. Then I ask, five seconds already over? No? Okay. Five seconds already over? No? Okay. Sometimes, some time later, he, after five seconds, we say, yes, five seconds are over. Okay, then I know the timer has expired. Okay? So these are usually also separate things in a CPU or in a, in a PLC. If all those things, uh, if all those things are combined in one casing, so if the CPU, the input and output things, even if they are logically separating, but if they are inside one casing, then it's a so-called compact PLC. Yeah? Compact PLCs are very usable for small applications. Yeah? However, the downside, the, the, the upside is, I plug here this 24 volt, I mount it into my cabinet, I have the screw terminals here and I'm done, I'm done. I do not need to, to make some configuration in my software that done. Huh? This is the benefit. The downside is if I really have to adapt later somehow my PLC, it's maybe no longer working because I already used all available outputs or all, all available inputs or something like this. Yeah? Or if I realize, hey, the inputs are a little bit too slow for my application, I cannot just exchange it. Uh, then I'm stuck to this, to this compact CPU. A lot of times no, no problem, but sometimes yes. Uh, this is why there are also modular PLCs. Uh, so in modular PLCs, all those things you see are usually separated. So there is a power supply module, book. There is a CPU module, book. There are input modules, different type, tuck, 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 tuck. There are output modules of different type, and then you plug in power supply module, you plug in the CPU, you plug in input and output cards and this thing is getting longer and longer and it's connected usually via bus system in the back. Yeah? Then I suddenly have to take care that I tell the CPU hi, how many cards you should have, that it can do its initial things then it's when it's waking up. Yeah? Usually Without program, there is still something on the CPU, this is the, the operating system. There is an operating system working on the CPU. This is usually not changeable. Yeah? The operating system doing some basic tasks like checking if all input and output cards are there. Okay? Checking if all in and, in and output cards which should be there are there. To enable this, this check, yeah? I have to tell which cards are there. Because otherwise, I, only have, I also have to give them addresses, I have to give them names. This is the input card 1, this is the input card 2. Yeah? So I have to do this configuration. Yeah? I have a little bit more work. However, if I then realize that this input card is not capable of what I'm doing, or the one they want to do, I take it out, I take a newer or a better one in, ready. Okay? I can adapt my application. I can adapt my hardware to my application, that's the big benefit of a uh, modular PLC. Okay. I also said uh, those CPU card. Uh, no, draw this picture. Yeah. There is a modular PLC. There is the power supply module somewhere. Uh, then there is the CPU, then there are maybe some input cards, yeah. I always say card because they are card style, yeah. digital inputs, analog input, whatever, yeah. how much I need. Yeah. Then there are output cards. And this is then my PLC. Yeah? This is then my PLC. So I have a CPU. I have inputs. I have outputs. 
I have my power supply module. Yeah? That's my CPU. Yeah? At the beginning, this was everything which is possible. Yeah? Meanwhile, with our fast bus systems, I can even plug. There's a bus system somewhere. Yeah? And somewhere else, there is a controller yeah, for decentral periphery, yeah, decentral periphery, DP controller, and uh, there there are also in and output cards located somewhere else in the plant, somewhere really at the other side, and does not really matter where. Uh, so I can bring my input and output cards to the place I want to have it. So I do not have to wire all sensors and so on, which are out there, yeah, to my PLC location. I can bring my in and output card location to the specific part of the plant yeah, and connect it there. And then the communication to the CPU is done via bus system. So there is a bus system. Yeah? And there might be somewhere else, something like this. And on the other side, yeah, there can be even then the programming laptop. I can watch this. Yeah? So Nice, right? Nice. There can be even a second CPU or something like this inside doing its stuff and they can communicate each other and then boom, 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 boom. So with bus communication, this is possible. Huh? And like I said, this is the real or also a big benefit of using a PLC that such things are possible. Huh? With a standard controller element, electrical controlled, this is simply not possible. Use a bus system, communicate to each other, use a programming device and so on to change the logic from somewhere. <laughs> this not even has to be in the same room or same room, isn't it? At the same location. This can be somewhere. Network world has some benefits. That's CPUs, how they are working. Okay? principle. Next time we're going to talk about uh, the program execution. Now I briefly told you the way. Next time we are precising this. Okay, this program execution. Go a little bit more in detail. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.